Doctor, you do a lot of research with tocotrienols. Can you talk about what those are and, and what the source, sources of those are? Yeah, tocotrienol is one form of uh, natural vitamin E. And vitamins, just in brief, uh, are something that the human body cannot make. But when there is not enough of it in the human body, you will actually manifest uh, a, a disorder. Mm -hmm. um, and when vitamin E was first discovered, uh, it was known in the form of what we now know as tocopherol. But then it was found out that the vitamin E family actually consists of two subfamilies, if you will. One would be tocopherol, made up of alpha, beta, gamma, delta tocopherol. And the other, uh, which was found later, after the tocopherols were found, uh, are the tocotrienols. And the structurally, they're very similar. Again, tocotrienols have alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So totally, there are eight members, four of which reside in the tocopherol family and four in the tocotrienol family. If you look at all vitamin E uh, research up to now, uh, you will find that over 95% of the literature, current literature, um, studies tocopherol, not tocotrienol. So somehow, interest in tocotrienol did not catch up until very recently. So 10 years ago, when I got into studying tocotrienol, and I asked, you, you know, why do everybody focus on alpha tocopherol? And, and why, what really is the rationale for not studying tocotrienol, there was not really a satisfactory answer. At the time, 1998, there were only 57 papers in the literature uh, of 25,000 papers <laughs> on vitamin E. So that tells you how little we knew. But maybe that was an opportunity for some of us that got into the field. Today, I just gave a talk and um, we reported there are 860 publications. So in a decade, uh, 57 became 860 it is a major takeoff, and also I reported that today that uh, tocotrienol related work has been cited in the literature now 15,300 plus times. So a lot of people are now reading it in the scientific community, citing it, de designing their own work based on those literature. So I think now it's picking up. But if you really look at the total body of literature today on vitamin E, which is about 40,000 uh, uh, papers or publications, um, 860 is a small fraction of 40,000. Mm. So there's a long way to go, uh, and it looks like uh, therein lies the opportunity for scientists. So you mentioned it's a, it comes from vitamin E, but in a broader sense, where does it come from? Is there certain foods or certain things that... Yeah, yeah uh, broader, broadly speaking, uh, vitamin E, tocopherols mainly come from the green leafy part of the plant. And tocotrienols, for some reason, uh, are the vitamin E of the seed form okay. of the plant. So plants, it seems, have made a conscious decision to keep tocotrienols in the seed. And there was a study that I recently read uh, from the agricultural community. When they killed tocotrienol in the seeds, the shelf life of the sh seeds sharply went down. Mm -hmm. Seeds are supposed to be under very harsh conditions surviving. Mm -hmm. So that when the right conditions come, they can germinate and give rise sure. to a new plant. So the shelf life of a seed going down is a big deal. And it seems that in the plant kingdom, the tocotrienols act as some type of a seed preservative, uh, giving it a long shelf life, which is a big deal because okay. uh, in, in, under bad conditions it, it endures, and then under favorable conditions it germinates. Mm -hmm. But coming to specific sources, a big source of tocotrienol is palm oil, rice bran oil, so these are, again, um, you know, examples all coming out of the seed variety. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have oat, barley. Those are smaller sources. A huge source is palm oil.